So I was joking around, you know, that this record's gonna make a lot of black metal bands look like Disneyland, you know? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. Those of you who know me personally know that besides metal, I am extremely passionate about history and I have a specific affinity for the ancient Greek and Roman times. So it's probably no surprise that I really like the band Ex Deo who are releasing their new album 13 Years of Nero. To learn all about it, I sat down with singer and songwriter Maurizio. So Maurizio, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, new Ex Deo record is gonna come out. Uh, that's exciting. But first, um, you just told me that you, you know, these days you live in Florida. So I don't know how upset you were about the Habs not winning the Stanley Cup. But um, at the very, <laughs> at the very least, you got Italy winning the Euro Cup. So I assume that you right. partied pretty, pretty hard. Yes, I was happy. I, I wish the Canadians would have won, though. I mean, I'm. I, I'm a new implant in Florida, so it's, I've only been here a year. Uh, I'm actually a Hawks fan. I was living in Chicago for almost 20 years, so I really like the Hawks and I like the Montreal Canadiens. But, uh, you know, it would have been cool to see the Canadians win. You know, they were kind of the underdogs. Yeah. Same way as Italy was the underdogs, and then they went and took it. You know, like, I mean, underdogs comparing to like when they, you know, didn't even qualify for the World Cup. So there was kind of right, like right. a revamp. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I still celebrate it. Every, you know, took about a day to recoup. <laughs> I was about to ask, how's your headache by now? <laughs> That's okay now, yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, and real quickly, you know, I uh, I see a lot of people, um, especially native English speaking people, uh, pronounce the name of of the, of the second band as Ex Dio. Um, how how much does that bother you? Uh, you know. I'm used to it by now, you know, and you should see right. uh, how many destructions of the word cataclysm I've heard. So. I'm sure, I'm <laughs> like, sure, yeah. So all over the world, that's even worse, but uh, ex Dio, ex Deo, you know, the, re the real way is ex Deo, you know, that's yeah, how you yeah. say it, but, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter. I mean, you're a busy guy, and you like to you like to keep yourself busy. Um, if yeah. I counted correctly, this new Ex, Ex Deo record is the 18th record in 26 years. Um, I could be yes. wrong. Yes. No, no. With everything I've released, yeah, with Cataclysm yeah. included, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that, scary when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, you've called yourself um, a late bloomer. Um, with more experience, what for you is the biggest difference now compared to those '90s? Is it is it less compromise from your end, or what? What's the what's the key change for you over those 26 years and 18 albums? Um, I don't know. I, I think that you know you you gain you gain experience with time, uh, making mistakes. You know, and then you know, uh, like the one thing that I've that I've learned is to not let like little things pass now compared to when I was younger where I'd be like ah it's not where I really wanted but whatever you know it'll be okay you know so that type of mentality has kind of taken aside especially in the last I would say four you know last four or five cataclysm records in the last uh, every ex deo record since Caligula I would say like we especially the last two we focused on uh, really you know not compromising yeah, to be honest, you know, like on, on, on the things that we feel needs to be accurate and all this stuff, especially when it comes to Roman stuff, you know, we've let, you know, it's it's the hardest thing to go to a director and tell them, I need this to be exactly like Carthage, you know, and it's like, yeah. they're like, well, how the hell are we going to do that? You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's, you know, you got to find the costumes, you got to, so then you have to deal with all the historic uh, criti critics out there. For sure. So one little thing on the armor is not right from that era, we get it, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah. so it's very difficult with Ex Deo to be perfect. Also with the Latin, there's so much variation when we use Latin words, it's like, oh, it's not really like that, you know, the teachers right. come out. So we live in that type of world. So from where I, be, I came, where things were a lot more easy, you know, I come from an era where the internet was the fax machine, you know, so, <laughs> so I come from that to what we are now. It's a huge difference as far as, you know, being meticulous yeah. with things, you have to.
is it fair to say that in your case the the quality of an Xdeo record is only going to push you more for the next Cataclysm record and vice versa? It, it has it has that effect because you don't want one to do super well and, and then the other one not because you're not mm -hmm. putting the same focus on it, right? Yeah. So, so they're two different beasts. I think that we're doing a good job at separating them more and more. Uh, although, you know, we're half of the band is, is in Cataclysm is now in Xdeo still. Yeah. It used to be full band was the same band, you know, except for one guy. Now it's like actually three and three. So it's like... Uh, Xdeo is becoming more of its own identity and Cataclysm is becoming more and more separated from it. Also the guitar sounds, you know, we've we've went to seven strings with Cataclysm and we stayed traditional with Xdeo because that it fits more mm -hmm. the, the environment of it. Uh, so so I, in my opinion, that's that's the main focus is to try and separate them as much because they're becoming um you know xdeo is becoming its own thing more and more and, and a lot right. of people are starting to get behind it so it's 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 a different world you know yeah. it, it has its it has its challenges you know when you're writing and it like, is this sound a little like cataclysm too much or something and right you know, we kind of go back and fix it you know we we For really sure. want it to be its own thing At uh, this time, you uh, focus around, you know, the, the colorful character of uh, the Emperor Nero, a controversial and divisive figure, often vilified and, and, and to, at times ridiculed, especially in, in, in later Christian stories and media. Um, yeah. But also, I, I, I would consider myself a little bit of a history buff. I studied Greek and Latin and all the kind of good stuff good. Uh, in school. Um, a highly misunderstood character as well in, in history. Uh, Very because high, yeah. a lot of the actual evidence, you know, if you see uh, a hugely popular emperor with the common people, um, mm -hmm. not so popular with the with the very wealthy who are heavily taxed uh, by him, um, mm -hmm. obviously also really accelerated the persecution of of, of Christians in, in the empire, um, mm -hmm. and then also his his death being the last in the uh, Julian dynasty. Um, right. a, a lot of people will point at his uh, suicide first emperor to commit suicide mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. maybe even the start of the fall of the Western Roman Empire 400 years later. It was, it was, the, fir it was the first emperor to do it. Yeah. Right? So he's the first emperor to commit suicide. So it set it a new precedent, you know. Um, he's heavily misunderstood. Also, you know what they say, history is always written by the victor, you know. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, one of the the main guy that's, that's, that spoke a, a, about him was Tacitus. And Tacitus is very heavily pro-Senate. Yeah. Pro Republic, pro Roman, you know, and like in that, in more elite type, um, you know, he was the he was the guy that seeded the not only him. I mean, you know, Caligula also, but he was a little bit more. It's a different story, but they sure. are they are they were anti-government. He didn't want to be an emperor, you know. He wanted to be an artist. He wanted to be right. an actor, or poet, and singer, you know. So it was that side by the Senate was was looked at. You know, slaves do that. You know, not. You know the commoners you know you're an emperor you're not supposed to do that and he was like why you know yeah. so he he didn't like them he he heavily taxed them to the point where they were like hey this is not cool anymore you know and then you know when you know you can't it's difficult even in today's society to please your senate and please the people right so you you have the same problem it's just back then was dealt differently you know what i mean so um i think a lot of stuff was exaggerated obviously after his death you know because they could and yeah. uh you know like him setting the world on, like you know rome on fire with the fiddle when the fiddle didn't exist back then you know but i yeah, think yeah. it was such a good story that we kept it we kept some of the mythic mythic For sure. uh, yeah. you know because to make it interesting in music but uh you're accurate yeah it's just like a lot of stuff is not exactly how they portray it you know it's gonna be you know and also you know those folk stories right so basically you know they want to amplify it so when you it's not like the internet today where you got different information arriving back then you had one guy speaking to the people about what's going on you know yeah. so obviously they'd like to have the oh you know The concept of somebody that really wants to pursue an entertainment career and being 
new or very unqualified for government taking over a powerful nation is maybe... Sounds like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm about to say. But that layer on top of that in Nero's yeah. time, you know, the, right. uh, being the emperor of the Roman Empire at the time is, is, a, is a wealth and a responsibility that we can't even comprehend. I mean, that is beyond the wealthiest men in the world today. And right. being very young, being pushed in that role as a as a as a teenager, uh, and having a mother that's very 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 deceitful in, as well. So, yes. you know, there's a lot of paranoia in the in the in that environment. You yeah, know, this, this is what we try to portray on the music a lot on this record. This this kind of twisted, even with the music. You know, we try to do some like you know uh, chords that are going off and like just a little bit. The music's yeah, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's purposely done that way to reflect. The paranoia time the tense the, the intensity you know like it's it's it, it was you know i find it was a very interesting era those 13 years you know it was yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. a lot of stuff happened it is a concept album about the 13 years of nero but you're going to talk about several elements that happened during that time not necessarily right. directly influenced by Nero right. himself yeah like because he was there when it happened, happened. Ex yeah. exactly yeah. so yeah. is it's going to be from a lyrical perspective clearly another quite diverse album that we tend to expect now from Exteo mm -hmm. how musically how is that reflected uh it's it's different it's not the same as the Immortal Wars obviously Immortal Wars dealt with the Carthage time Scipio mm -hmm. and you know Hannibal and that was a completely different uh era it has a little bit more a Middle Eastern um, feeling to it also and some of the instruments and then we have a little bit of a you know it's much more melodic because I think the melodies like that kind of can bring you back into a different era of time mm -hmm. as well depending how you do them um this one is more guitar driven I found that Immortal was a little bit more melodic and orchestral. This one is okay. a little bit more hard driven. It it turns though, like it starts very heavy, uh, barbaric, you know, with Fall of Claudius, which is a very complex song. It goes everywhere in there. And then it turns into Imperator, which is very rhythmic and very, yeah. you know, heavy, you know, but but it turns like if, if you look at, you know, the records made in a chronological time frame. you know, yeah. it starts with Claudius and then he goes, and then it keeps going. He comes in and then it's, it starts moving. And we purposely did the intermezzo in the middle. And the actual intermezzo, which is the instrumental in the middle, is kind of reflective of the record because it starts very kind of dramatic and you're in this epic kind of feeling and it gets dark and weird. And then it turns into this glorious thing, right? It mm -hmm. opens up. I find that the record's like that. It starts very heavy, guitar driven, and as it goes, it gets more epic, grandiose, kind of like orchestral takes over. It's not, it's really meant to transport you during the feeling of it, you know, okay. because the beginning is like, I'm taking over and I'm going to be different and mm -hmm. starting to be the paranoia still that the mom's around, you know, the head of the snake is, is the mom, you know, and it's yeah. like, uh, so Agrippina and all that. So it's, it's a complex record. It wasn't easy to put together, but we we had a mission uh, with a plan uh, put out, you know, so. It's clear that your, your um, passion about Roman history goes deeper than just the surface or like, you know, the people that always appear in the big budget movies or, or what have right. you. Um, is, would you like to at one point like really delve into more obscure stories that may not have like oh yeah nero or spartacus i've heard of those people um, right just to go like let me take you down so we we are we are preparing that okay. we, we 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 touched a little bit i think with immortal wars because it's a full complete you know, conceptual record about Hannibal. It's not like everybody that knows who sure. that is, you know, although yeah. it is a popular figure still. Um, but we need to kind of open up the doors to, to something that's uh, more popular to bring in people so that they understand the concept. And once they're in and they get more interested in what the Roman history is, it'll be easier for us to open up that other gate, right? Because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. great figures like Caracalla and Elagobulus, the crazy, you know, emperor, you know, that used to do all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, uh, there's eras also that are important, you know, like um, Attila and all that stuff. There's a lot of stuff, you know, it's a thousand years of history with yeah. a lot of craziness. 
and a lot of more underground battles and stuff. So to, for us to dwell in there, to keep the people in, you know, that, uh, that are going to continue to be like, oh, this is cool. We have to kind of first introduce something they know. The gods have spoken. The gods have spoken. But Nero is more than just, for me, is, is more than just a, a, a character everybody knows. It relates with metal enormously because, you know, a lot of the figures and the stuff that you deal with in metal are coming directly from his era and from him. So you talked about the persecution of Christians. He's labeled, he coined the term Antichrist, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's the Antichrist, you know, that, that was, you know, later on Christians labeled him like that. He was the Antichrist, you know, to make him even more evil and all that, which translated into many record titles in metal, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and stuff. And the more, the biggest one, which a lot of people don't know about, is the fact that the crosses, right? So at that time, there was a lot of people that were getting crucified because of the Christian persecutions and all that. That was the ultimate punishment, you know, and all that. And uh, when they did, a lot of them didn't want to die like Jesus because they said they weren't worthy to die the same way. So he inverted the crosses, you know. He says, well, you'll die the same way, but upside down, you know. So they, they did a lot of that. And then that symbol, you know, became rebellious for the Christians. They were like, we're going to rebel by having ourselves upside down so we don't die like Jesus. So it was a rebel sign that translated into metal, you know? So yeah. that's that's the crazy thing about a lot of that that people don't know, you know, and it's Nero. What are you planning now as this world is opening up again? What can we expect in the immediate future? For Exdale, we had a massive tour planned, uh, which was six weeks long in Europe with Flesh God Apocalypse. And uh, that nice. needed to be moved because there's too many countries that are not ready in Europe. Uh, it's it's yeah. too unstable. So that's pushed to the fall. We are working to, to, to bring Exdale to um, uh, Canada and the US uh, with, a, with a tour. We're kind of, you know, kind of looking when is the right time because we don't want to be overwhelmed also cataclysm x day all that stuff sure. what i can tell you is that cataclysm will be taking a, a pretty long break it's not going to be like a one-year break like x day did last time we didn't know if we were going to continue x day that was the thing you know we we were overwhelmed yeah. with cataclysm and um but now that we are in kind of in control with the situation with both bands um i believe that we're going to be focusing way more on on x day there's going to be an x day record before a new cataclysm i can tell you that Oh, so the band wants to bring it to a theatrical aspect. We want to bring the band with a live thing that's kind of theatrical, not only music. Okay. So so we are focusing on that. So that's the plan. You whispered words of deceit. I remember everything. I don't know how many, just the average Italian or Greek or 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 what have you still feels connected to like the Baroque and the Renaissance time frame and what have you. Um, what is it with the Mediterranean or Mediterranean roots that this music is so inspiring to you? It's, it's I mean, it's the birthplace, right? So it's, you know, I I, I was always surrounded by it as, a, as an Italian, uh, you know, uh, origin uh, dude, you know, and I, uh, my family was always around that stuff. For me, it was normal, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Except that at some point when I went to Italy and I and I you know was in Rome and I and I really explored and I studied it. I stayed there for like two months, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I absorbed so much of it that I was like, this is too crazy. Like it's too big, and I have to do a band about it. Nobody's talking <laughs> about it. Everybody's Vikings, and I'm like it doesn't touch me personally, you know. I was like, I like the music, but it's not me, right? right. So, so, but I says, why is nobody touching Rome? It's like so massive, brutal. It's got everything. The stories are crazy. The emperor that kills, you know, you know, like everybody. And it's like, it's like they throw people off cliffs. I mean, you can't have more metal than that. And I was like, yeah, this, uh -huh. if I can bring this into a symphonic way, I think it, 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 it'll really be something big. Now, what's cool is I think that I am part of the movement of the symphonic thing. I also manage all these bands, right? So right. I have a management company. So Flesh Got Apocalypse, Septic Flesh, Karakangren, they're all bands that are with me. Mm -hmm. So we have this type of movement with x like the, you know, the four, you know what I mean? I yeah, mean, yeah, it yeah, used yeah. to be more Borgir, but they're not really 
active anymore, I find and it's a different sure. world. Um, you feel that that South Europe type of thing, you know, that that's there, you know, even with septic flesh from Greece, it's just so, you yeah, know, those guys are another Dark level. lunacy, another one. Yeah, yeah. Also, you know, they're just a different level of, of you know, they're, they're composers, you know, like, you know, they, yeah. they, they can really write orchestral scores, you know, it's a, it's a different world, you know, so I, I, you know, there's, I think it's rooted in, in where you, your upbringing, you know, um, I think the Roman thing is now taken more granted in Italy because it's so common with their culture. You know, you touch a wall, it's been there for 3000 years. It's right. You know, it, it, it's it's a different thing. But um, it was also associated to weird stuff, you know, because of dominance and imperialism and all that stuff, you know, but I see it's for me, it's a historic thing. Right. It has. It, it's it's you know the, the era was different at that time you know mm -hmm. it was all about conquering land doesn't matter if you were from a different tribe or whatever that's what it was you know and yeah to expand it you know conquer so, or be conquered yeah right you know and then in many ways if you look at the roman empire and you look at the united states of america it's very similar in in, in it's you know it's just different now you know now it's it's economical yeah. there used to be war back then you know and and uh you know, I see it as like the Romans who were coming into France and saying, hey, we bringing you technology, we're bringing you Internet, we're bringing you, you know, kind of thing. And yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. we don't want any of it. We want to stay like we are. But it says, but your life will be better. You know, here's the roads. <laughs> you know, we can connect the whole world into one, which is crazy because you see it now. You know, it used to be just a simple road would do that. Now it's airlines, you know, now right. it's so. There's this feeling of connection that wanted it needed to be done, and I think the Romans were the first to bring it. And and you know, obviously there's war, there's conflict when people you know sure, don't want to, and so yeah. So I think that that's the root cause. You know, it's it's kind of like in 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 the feeling of the European um, South Europe, and that's why a lot of the bands that are coming out of there. You see more passion for it. Honestly, when this pandemic hit, uh, we, we I, it just hit so hard that like I wasn't used to being said, you can't move. Mm -hmm. you know? Like I've been moving since I was in my, a teenager touring, you know, so yeah. it, it was kind of a forced break that I desperately needed, you know, so so in a way it wasn't a bad thing for me, especially spending time with my family, which, you know, I, I've been spent so much time on, on the on the road that, you know, you kind of you forget that that's so important to do especially at a, a, a brand new baby uh, so two years old now he was yeah, born yeah, like yeah. just a year old when this thing hit so so a lot of positive in that end and also re exploring everything and realizing that you don't have to do so much right know? so that's yeah, that's yeah, yeah. all right awesome well um when you find yourself touring again whether that is with cataclysm or exdeo um i do hope obviously that we can hear some of those announcements for canada soon and then um maybe with either a good canadian beer or an amphora of of wine uh we can uh, talk more about roman history and, that, that uh, and catch up on how like the tours great, are going thank like you so much time. Maurizio. i really appreciate your time today um and uh, super excited for the new album thank you awesome and thank you so much for your support and time appreciate it You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.